Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Adultery and Divorce According to the Scriptures. That is, Adultery and Divorce According to the Scriptures. Many people are confused when it comes to what the Holy Scripture says about these subjects. So today, we will learn what the Most High commands regarding adultery and divorce, and we will explore the Christian deception that is at the root of the confusion. Let's start with Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, and I will be reading from the Brenton Septuagint translation. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 18 says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. In order to make sure that we do not commit adultery, we need to understand what adultery is. So the question is, what exactly is adultery? We'll find the answer in Leviticus chapter 18 verse 20. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 20 reads thus, And thou shalt not lie with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. So adultery is lying with another person's wife. Adultery always involves another man's wife. It is impossible for an unmarried woman to commit adultery because she is not someone's wife. Therefore, if a man lies with or has sexual relations with an unmarried woman, neither of them is committing adultery. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10 says, Whatever man shall commit adultery with the wife of a man, so it has to be the wife of someone else for it to be considered adultery. It continues, Or whoever shall commit adultery with the wife of his neighbor, let them die the death. The adulterer, that's the man that has sexual relations with another man's wife, and the adulteress, that's the married woman who is having sexual relations with a man that is not her husband. The law says that both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 22 says, And if a man be found lying with, that means having sexual relations with, a woman married to a man. So the man is having sex with a woman that is married to another man. That's an adulterer and an adulteress. Ye shall kill them both. The law says they must be put to death. The man that lay with the woman, that's the adulterer, and the woman, that's the adulteress. So shalt thou remove the wicked one out of Israel. If a man is married and he has sexual relations with a single woman, so that woman is not his wife, but she is also not the wife of another man, that is not adultery. Adultery is only when a man has sexual relations with a woman who is married or betrothed, also known as engaged or promised, to another man. If that woman is single, she is not married to anybody, she is not engaged to anybody, she cannot commit adultery. 
Now, please be advised that this is not an excuse to be unfaithful to our wives by having sexual relations with single women. For those who desire to have multiple wives and to do so righteously, please listen to my teaching entitled, Is it a sin to have multiple wives? That is, is it a sin to have multiple wives? Wives. Let's continue with Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 9, verse 9. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 9, verse 9, reads thus Sit not at all with another man's wife. It's always talking about another man's wife. If it's not another man's wife, it is not adultery. It continues, Nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine, lest thine heart incline unto her, so you fall in love with her. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction, meaning you commit adultery and you pay the price. If a man spends an inordinate amount of time with another man's wife, he may fall in love with her and end up committing adultery. This would ultimately lead to his destruction. And we can learn more about that in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 27 to 35. That's Proverbs chapter 6, verses 27 to 35. It reads thus, Shall anyone bind fire in his bosom and not burn his garments? Or will anyone walk on coals of fire and not burn his feet. So naturally, if you hold fire in your bosom, you're going to burn your clothes. If you walk on fire, you're going to burn your feet. It's natural. Verse 29. So is he that goes into a married woman. We are talking about adultery. The man that goes in and has sexual relations with a woman who is married to another man... It says, he shall not be held guiltless, neither anyone that touches her. When a woman is married to another man, that woman is off limits to everyone else. Verse 30, it is not to be wondered at if one should be taken stealing, for he steals that when hungry he may satisfy his soul. So sometimes a person is very hungry, they have nothing to eat, and they steal something. That shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. They have to eat. Verse 31. But if he should be taken, so if he is caught stealing, he shall repay sevenfold. He has to repay seven times more than what he stole. Therefore, it is not worth it to steal and shall deliver himself by giving all his goods. If he has to give the last thing that he owns in order to repay what he stole seven times over, he can do that and deliver himself. But the adulterer, that's the man who has sexual relations with other men's wives through want of sense, meaning he has no common sense, procures destruction to his soul. He's going to be destroyed for his folly. Verse 33, he endures both pain and disgrace, and his reproach shall never be wiped off. Verse 34, for the soul of her husband. So again, it's a married woman. Only married women can be adulteresses. A single woman cannot commit adultery. It is impossible. The soul of her husband is full of jealousy. He will not spare in the day of vengeance. So when he catches that man having sexual relations with his wife, he will not spare that man. 
He will not forego his enmity for any ransom. No matter what you offer him to spare you, he is not going to take it. Neither will he be reconciled for many gifts. He'll take your life before he takes your gifts. This is why adultery is so dangerous. It only leads to destruction. When the children of Israel were in our own land, abiding by the laws of the Most High, adultery was punishable by death. Both the adulterer and the adulteress were stoned to death. Now that we're in the land of our captivity, where adultery is celebrated in songs, books, and movies, our best response to this abomination is divorce. Divorce that person that betrayed your trust. Now let's examine the law of divorce that was established by the Most High himself. Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 1 to 4. That's Deuteronomy chapter 24 verses 1 to 4. And it reads thus. And if anyone should take a wife and should dwell with her, then it shall come to pass, if she should not have found favor before him, because he has found some unbecoming thing in her, that he shall write for her a bill of divorcement, and give it into her hands, and he shall send her away out of his house. So this man married a woman, but then he recognized that there's something about her that is off-putting. He doesn't want this woman to continue as his wife. The Most High says that he shall write her a bill of divorcement. He shall give her a divorce and send her out of his house. It continues in verse 2. And if she should go away and be married to another man, which means that once she gets the bill of divorcement, she is free to marry another man because she is no longer attached to her first husband. Verse 3, and the last husband should hate her and write for her a bill of divorcement. So there's always a requirement for a bill of divorcement in order to end that marriage with that woman and should give it into her hands and send her away out of his house. And the last husband should die who took her to himself for a wife. Verse 4, the former husband, so that's the first husband she had, who sent her away, shall not be able to return and take her to himself for a wife after she has been defiled. So even though he divorced the woman, as long as she has sexual relations with another man, she is defiled. And it is an abomination for that first husband to take her back, even though her second husband has died. It continues, because it is an abomination before the Lord thy God. And ye shall not defile the land which the Lord thy God gives thee to inherit. The Most High has forbidden his holy people from practicing the abominations of the other nations. We see celebrities who get married and divorce, they go to other people, then they come back together, then they break up again, and they come back together. That's an abomination. This repeated breaking up and hooking up is common among the heathen. It is not to be practiced by the holy people of Israel. The Israelites are forbidden to do such thing. The question could be asked, why would a man want to divorce his wife? Let's look at Ecclesiasticus, which is Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 25, verses 23 to 26. That's Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 25, verses 23 to 26, and it reads thus, A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart, a woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, 
maketh weak hands and feeble knees. If a man marries a woman and discovers that she's a wicked woman that makes him have a heavy countenance, that hurts him, that will not comfort him when he is distressed, that makes him feel weak and feeble, he has every right to give her a bill of divorce and send her away out of his house. Verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her we all die. This is a reference to Genesis chapter 3 when the woman allowed herself to be seduced by the serpent instead of going to her husband. So if a man is married to a woman who is being seduced by others and she is not coming to him to subject herself to his authority, if she is not submitting to his leadership, that's reason to give her a bill of divorce and send her away out of his house. Verse 25. Give the water no passage. In other words, put your foot down and don't allow this nonsense to continue under your roof. Neither a wicked woman... Liberty to guard abroad. To guard abroad means to go about talking about his business, running her mouth, gossiping, getting up in everybody's affairs. That woman deserves divorce. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, so if she refuses to submit to your authority, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. There are many reasons why a righteous man would give a bill of divorce to a woman. If she is a wicked woman who refuses to submit to him and she is a gossiper and a talebearer, cut her off from your flesh, give her a bill of divorce and send her away. Out of your house. Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 26, verses 7 to 8. That's Ecclesiasticus or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 26, verses 7 to 8, reads thus An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that hath hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. If you accidentally grab a scorpion, as soon as you notice it, you need to get rid of that thing. Get that out of your hand. That's a danger to you. The same is true of an evil wife. If you have an evil wife, it's only a matter of time before she destroys you. It continues. A drunken woman and a gadda abroad. Again, a gossiper, a tale bearer, a woman who doesn't know when to shut the hell up, causes great anger and she will not cover her own shame. This is a woman that should receive a bill of divorce and be sent away out of your house. There are legitimate reasons for righteous men to divorce their wives. Does this mean that a man is always right to put away or divorce his wife? Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 reads thus. He that has found a good wife has found favors. So no, it's not a good idea to put away a good wife. Every man knows whether or not he has a good wife. There are men with wicked wives, but they are ashamed and embarrassed. So instead of putting her away and publicly demonstrating that she is a wicked, evil wife, they pretend she's okay. She's a good wife. No, she's not. 
He that has found a good wife has found favors. If you don't have a good wife, you're not doing yourself any favor by keeping hold of her. It continues, and has received gladness from God. A good wife brings gladness. She brings joy to her husband's heart. He that puts away a good wife, because there are some fools out there who don't recognize what they have, and they put away or divorce good wives, it says, puts away a good thing. And he that keeps an adulteress is foolish and ungodly. A man that knows that his wife is sleeping with other men and he chooses to keep her is foolish and ungodly. That is not a righteous man. If we were in our land applying the judgment, that woman would be put to death. She deserves to die for her adultery. But the most that we can do in the land of our captivity is give her a writing of divorce, put it in her hand, and send her away from her house. To recap, so far, we have discovered from the Holy Scriptures, which Christians call the Old Testament, that adultery is a man having sexual intercourse with a woman who is married to another man. According to the laws of the Most High, this abomination is punishable by stoning both the adulterer, that's the man, and the adulteress, that's the married woman who's sleeping with another man who's not her husband, to death. They're supposed to be stoned to death. However, as we are not in our own land, which means that we cannot enforce this judgment today, the most appropriate and fitting response is divorce. Put that person away. Now let's go to the Christian Bible, also known as the New Testament, to see how the children of Lucifer have undermined and rejected the laws of the Most High with regards to adultery and divorce. For a thorough understanding of the true identity of Lucifer, please listen to my teaching entitled, The Revelation of Lucifer. That is, the revelation of Lucifer. Now let's go to the Christian Bible, and I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, and verses 31 to 32. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, and 31 to 32, in the King James Version of the Christian Slave Bible, says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So this is Lucifer saying that he did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. To destroy is to set aside, to make null and void, to undermine the law or the prophets. It continues, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. In other words, as long as there is a heaven and an earth, there is not one jot, the smallest part of the law that shall pass away. As long as heaven and earth exist, the law remains. It is not to be destroyed. It is not to be undermined. It is not to be rejected. It is not to be made null and void. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, whichever commandment you think is the smallest, including the laws that deal with adultery and divorce, 
It says, whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So Lucifer has just said that not even the smallest part of the law shall be done away with as long as heaven and earth exist. And anyone that teaches people otherwise shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But in true Luciferian fashion, we are going to see that he then proceeds to destroy the law, to undermine the law, to set aside and make null and void the law that he said will not pass away till heaven and earth pass. Verse 31. It hath been said. So this is hearsay according to Lucifer. They say, let's see what they say. Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But wait a minute. We read a moment ago that the Most High commanded that if a man is to put away his wife, he must give her a writing of divorcement. This is not hearsay. This it has been said nonsense needs to stop. This is undermining the very words of the Most High God. This is not hearsay. This is the law of divorce. Verse 32. But... There should be no buts when dealing with the words of the Most High God. But Lucifer says, But I say unto you, I, Lucifer, say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. There is nowhere in the Holy Scriptures that says anything like that. We already read the law of divorce and it does not say what Lucifer has just said. That's the reason he said, but I say unto you, because he's introducing something new. He has brought the law of the Most High God down to the status of hearsay. It has been said. He used the word, but to contrast, to show that he's about to undermine even more the law of God, then he said, I say. So he's raised himself up. He did say that he would be like the Most High. So now he's telling you to reject the words of the Most High and to accept what he, Lucifer, says. Then he proceeds to change the law. The law says that if a man gives his wife a bill of divorcement and sends her away out of his house, she is free to marry another man. Lucifer says if that man puts away his wife, except for fornication, she's now become an adulteress. Why? Because Lucifer has made the law of divorce that was established by the Most High himself null and void. So when a Christian or Luciferian looks at this, what they see is that this woman is still married because her divorce is not recognized. Therefore, when she joins herself to another man, she is committing adultery. It continues, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Why is that? Because Lucifer has just rejected, undermined, destroyed the law of divorce. He has made it null and void. So this woman, who the Most High says is divorced because her husband gave her a bill of divorcement and sent her away out of his house, Lucifer is saying that divorce is not recognized. She's still married. So anybody that touches her committeth adultery. Let's look at Luke chapter 16, verses 17 to 18. Luke chapter 16, verses 17 to 18 says, And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. So Lucifer always starts by giving lip service 
to the law. He's saying not one small bit of the law is going to fail. Nothing of the law will be destroyed. So he's giving lip service. Let's see how he continues. Verse 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. The law does not say that. He's actually adding to the law. So what he's doing here now is he is rejecting the law that says that we must not add to the law. He's saying if a man puts away his wife, which the man, according to the law, can do, and marrieth another, which the man, according to the law, can do, according to Luciferian doctrine, that man is now an adulterer. He's committed adultery. So the Most High says that man is within his right to divorce that woman and marry another. Lucifer says that man is an adulterer. It continues. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. So if another man decides to take this woman as his wife after she received a bill of divorcement from her husband... Lucifer says that man is committing adultery. The Most High did not say that. The Most High said that man is within his right to take this woman as his wife. So the question is, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the Most High God or are you going to believe Lucifer? The children of Israel who are righteous before the Most High God will always believe him over anyone else. But the children of Lucifer will reject the laws of the Most High God and they will follow their father because they are like him. Matthew chapter 19, verses 7 to 11. Matthew chapter 19, verses 7 to 11 reads thus. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And that's a very good question because he continues to undermine the law. He continues to give lip service to the commandments of the Most High God, then making them null and void. Verse 8, he saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. But guess what? There's nowhere in the Holy Scriptures that says that Moses gave this law because of the hardness of anybody's heart. The laws were given because the Most High told Moses to give them to the children of Israel. The Most High did not say, because their hearts are hard, let them put away their wives. The Most High does not subject himself to the conditions of the hearts of men. The Most High makes laws, and if men do not subject themselves to those laws, those men are punished. Lucifer will have us believe that the Most High was afraid to tell these men, you can't put away your wife. Therefore, he submitted himself to the hardness of these men's heart and said, all right, because your heart is hard, you can put away your wife. That is not in the Holy Scriptures. But this is what the children of Lucifer believe. Verse 9. And I say unto you, again, I, Lucifer, say unto you. So he's saying to hell with Moses. To hell with the law. To hell with what the Most High said. Because I, Lucifer, say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. Again, he has destroyed the law, undermined the law, set aside the law, made the law null and void, and created his own to replace it. And whosoever marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. Well, I reject Lucifer, and I reject his New Testament. I reject his undermining of the laws of the Most High God, because I am a child of the Most High God. Your decision would determine whose child you are. Are you a child of God, or are you a child of Lucifer?
Verse 10. His disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. So here, even his disciples, all that they were dumb enough to follow him, they recognized this is not a good thing. If what you're saying is true, we might as well not get married. Isn't that interesting? The laws of the Most High never discourage anybody from getting married. But Lucifer, who tries to turn everything upside down, he opened his big mouth, destroyed the law, and led to the conclusion that it's best not to get married. Verse 11. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. So not everybody can receive this ridiculous nonsense, this garbage that's coming from his Luciferian lips, only those to whom it is given. This is why only the children of Lucifer can receive this saying, because they are the ones to whom it is given. This rubbish is not for those who serve the Most High only and keep his commandments. It is only for the children of Lucifer. In conclusion, Israelite men are forbidden from lying with or having sexual relations with women who are married to other men. And married Israelite women must not have sexual relations with men who are not their husbands. This is an abomination in the sight of the Most High. Should a person commit adultery, the most suitable response is divorce. Because we are unable to stone the adulterer or the adulteress in the lands of our captivity. Righteous Israelites will abide by the laws of the Most High as they pertain to adultery and divorce. We must not allow the children of Lucifer to deceive us with the nonsense that is written in the piece of garbage that they call the New Testament. And with that, I say, Shalom.